live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering DevNet Create 2017. Brought to you by Cisco. Okay, hey, welcome back everyone. We're live in San Francisco. This is theCUBE's exclusive coverage of Cisco's new inaugural DevNet Create event, targeting the DevOps open source community as they put their toe in the water, their foray into a community approach to build on top of their success of their classic developer program, DevNet, which is only three years old. Shouldn't call it classics. It's actually emerging still and growing. Our next guest is our pitch, Ashpura, GM Network and Orchestration at the Linux Foundation. I'm also joined by my co-host Peter Burris. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Good to see you again. Welcome back CUBE alumni. So obviously, um, open networking. <laughs> you guys are involved, you're on a great show. Uh, we cover it every year, Open Networking Summit, uh, among other things. Um, huge demand for the technologies and appetite for content in your area. Here at Cisco DevNet Create, you're seeing the emergence of Cisco taking their roots in networking and plumbing and operations which by the way, you know from the networking world, yeah. <laughs> sacred cows and all over the place. Bringing it to the Wild West agile developer who wants infrastructure as code. Cisco is bringing that application meets infrastructure saying we're going to bring programmable networking. That's music to the ears to the developers. So we are getting infrastructure as code. That's your wheelhouse. What's going on in the Linux Foundation to continue this momentum? How do you guys look at this trend? Give us the update on how the Linux Foundation is participating, supporting, getting involved with this programmable networking infrastructure as code trend. Sure, so first of all, you know, let me baseline everybody. Um, Linux Foundation is here to create the largest shared technology investment by building sustainable ecosystems. That's the mission in life. And within the Linux Foundation, obviously the most successful open source project is Linux. Mm -hmm. But we're way beyond Linux, right? We host a whole set of projects, uh, open source projects, you know, starting from cloud native, you know, CNCF, uh, Cloud Foundry, to blockchain projects like, uh, you know, Hyperledger, automotive grade Linux, and a whole variety of, you know, let's encrypt, you name it, right? Um, that, that we facilitate this uh, shared technology investment. The area I own, which is networking, has, has uh, you know, several projects up and down the stack, all the way from data plane acceleration to orchestration, analytics, and um, it's intended for you know, carriers, enterprise, and cloud service providers, including you know, one of the most recent, highly successful and, and, and much in demand project called ONAP, which is a full network automation stack, uh, you know, open network automation platform, mm -hmm. which again is an open source way to sort of connect apps to infrastructure, right? So this is the movement that that you just mentioned, and I'm really excited that you know the community is finally, you know, realizing the implications of the three-letter acronym that started this whole thing called SDN. Yeah. <laughs> SDN, SD WAN, <laughs> all that stuff going on. Software defined, data center. Obviously, Cisco has a huge dominant mm -hmm. position in the enterprise data center in particular, but also they have a huge service provider business, MSO. All that is, they've been connecting networks at internet scale since you know, the 90s, really doing a great job. Now they got to really think about the future. What's your, your, your view there? Because I think the Linux Foundation, you guys have been great stewards for sustainable ecosystems, but now Cisco has to put their toe into the new ecosystem. Right. What's, what's the meaning of that? What's the what's the, what's the view outlook? What's your what's your take on on where they're at? I mean, it looks good on off the tee, middle of the fairway, as we were saying earlier. Messaging's good. Ninety percent of the content's community. Yep. Agenda's relevant. Looks good. I think we um, our perspective is there is a there's a major you know disruption happening, but it's not a technology disruption. It's an end user disruption. And what I mean by that is the end users, whether it be you know, carriers, whether it be enterprises, whether it be cloud service providers, they are demanding, they are demanding that open source be part of the agenda. And the reason for that is very simple, right? Um, it's providing more agility, providing the access to the source code to allow for much faster feature development. They want to contribute they want to develop the ecosystem to meet their requirements, and everybody is unique, as we all know. Mm -hmm. uh, what is happening is, in this 
new environment, uh, you know, vendors, service providers, carriers, everybody is reinventing themselves. And they're reinventing themselves with a new business model. And the business model is essentially, you know, how do I take a leadership role in developing this shared technology investment? And it's not about a box. Yeah. It's not about the fastest and the smallest and the largest, yeah. you know, switch routers, uh, et cetera. It's about a software platform. It used to be about free software. Now, it's, nothing's free because people are putting their company's name on the line, their business model's now integrated to open source. Correct. And they have people involved in the process, so technically it's free software, um, but it's really technically not free. But this is the new business model. This is what people are doing. I think you it's can- tier one resource. It, it's, I mean, if you look at the world's largest carriers today, right, whether it's in China, whether it's in US, or in Europe, they have deployments that are built on open source, right? Yeah. And, and so open source is becoming, open source networking specifically is becoming mainstream, right, in terms of uh, deployment. What's the hottest mainstream product right now? Is it SDN? Uh, What's the hottest SDN area? SDN is a technology, SDN and NFV, Network okay. Function Virtualization, those are technologies that enable uh, the deployment of open source projects. So, so we got projects like Open Daylight, ODL, OPNFV, uh, ONAP. You know, these are just names. And again, as networking, what's the hottest area? You know, NFV or uh, right now, ONAP is is the hottest, yeah. right? And as networking guys, we always make these th three or four letter acronyms. So, sorry to <laughs> sorry okay. to bug you, but that, uh, that's how mind. it is. <laughs> so, the uh, one of the observations, at least, we made a Wikibon, uh, and we made it here a couple times, is that. Open source has proven to be magnificently successful when the target is well defined. In other words, conventions of an operating system, there's no disagreement about what an operating system does. Hence, open source could create a, a Linux that has been just wildly successful. Open source has not been as good at redefining the new use cases or where the technology might go, and therefore, a lot, to, a lot of times, open source developers end up looking at each other and making each other's tools work, which is, for example, in the big data universe, restricted the adoption of Hadoop and the applicability of Hadoop, for example. Still getting value out of it, but it might, it's not as successful as it might be. That raises a question, I'm wondering what role you play in all this. Is there a need for a degree of open source leadership that can kind of set the big picture, the long-term trends, without undermining the innovative and inventive freedom of how developers have demonstrated they want to work together. What do you think? I think that's an excellent question. What happens is um, uh, just by throwing software on, say, GitHub, doesn't make you an open source project. I mean, yeah, it does make you open source, but that doesn't make you a successful open source project. You need a community behind it. You need a community of developers and a sustained ecosystem, right? Um, so. One of the things we are championing, and I'm personally, you know, driving that agenda, which is, um, you know, uh, thought leadership on how do they, how do these pieces fit together. So as we are moving from, you know, uh, components that were like disaggregated in networking to production-ready uh, software components to production-ready solutions, right? These all need to fit together and developed in its entirety. So. When you, when you look at it holistically uh, from, from a solutions perspective, the most important thing that matters are use cases. And so what we, have totally done, what we have done is for every project, strategically, when the requirements are laid down, uh, think of that as a you know, requirements document, or when the architecture is laid down, the end user use cases are explicitly defined for the community, uh, the architecture is laid out, and in that framework, the Linux Foundation facilitates the development, the infrastructure, the DevOps, the agile model to come and co-create this technology in this area. So that's how you're doing the ideation. Are you then taking that and stepping up and also doing some of the design work? And it sounds like you are. We facilitate uh, the community to do the design work. We give them architectural thought leadership. We give Good. them into project cross leadership. So for example, uh, you know, we have in my group, like in networking, we have about uh, 11 plus projects, right? There are multiple data plane acceleration projects. Now when you're putting a solution, you want 
portion of data plane acceleration to ride on a control plane, to ride on orchestration, right, to be tested end to end. So projects like OPNFP, for example, they test all the pieces they test. They test, they, uh, you know, things like FDIO, which is an acceleration project. They te test OpenStack, right? Which again, it's not Linux Foundation, but we do bring all the pieces together. So effectively, the end user has it relatively easy to adopt and start installing. Congratulations, I saw that the Linux Foundation recently hired Cheryl Chamberlain yes. as the chief of staff. Uh, Cube alumni I've been on many times. Yes. Shout out for Cheryl. Um, so you guys are growing. Um, so how are you guys handling the growth? And I want to get your thoughts. I don't know, you don't have to speak for the whole foundation, but in general, for the folks not necessarily familiar with the inner workings of the Linux Foundation, like open source, you guys are always evolving and growing. What, how are you serving your stakeholders, your members, and, and taking care and maintaining the sustainable ecosystems? Yeah, so the difference between a typical, you know, throw the code up on GitHub versus actively managed sustainable ecosystem is, is where Linux Foundation comes in, right? So what we provide to, uh, you know, projects in different capacity is everything from IT as a service, marketing as a service, uh, program management, thought leadership, uh, executive directors, uh, you know, uh, PR, media, uh, and most importantly, events, global events to get the word out, right? All of that service, if you may, is what the, what facilitates the community. And once the community is all coming together, uh, you know, things happen, right? I'll just give you an example, we just completed a, uh, developer summit at um, uh, on one of the projects called ONAP uh, ran out of capacity. Clearly, uh, 200 people from worldwide top-notch architects got in a room, and they discussed how to merge almost you know 15 million lines of code, and they figured it out in four over days. Over coffee? <laughs> Not over coffee. It's like four days, but <laughs> they figured it out. Right, so I think that level of facilitation that we can provide, because you can't have it, you can't have it on a, on a blank piece of paper. You need some framework, some governance, some uh, you know model, yeah. and some processes on how to do it. Right, and that's what Linux Foundation excels at. Okay, talk about the. Um I want to move into the third area I want to discuss with you. Uh, so you mentioned uh, the three major customer and end users: um, carriers. Enterprises, cloud service providers. Um, how does that? How do you guys relate and serve those customers when there's other stuff going on in the industry? Well, we see open compute. Facebook's donating a lot of stuff. Google's throwing in a ton of open source. We haven't yet to see Amazon make their move with donating really good networking stuff. Certainly, we've seen some machine learning out there, but um, we're yep. expecting to see an arms race of presence coming in. It's like open bar at the at the at the hotel. More goodness is coming in from the big guys sponsoring great code. Yeah, so my mission is, is uh, this year at least, one of the things that I've laid out at ONS uh, this year was, was to harmonize the ecosystem. And harmonization doesn't mean, you know, merge it all so now you have one solution. Harmonization means, you know, understand where each other solutions interwork. Uh, interoperate, and if they sort of overlap, we end up merging merging the projects, like like what we did for Ecomp and and OpenO, right? Uh, so that's that's com that's one of the missions. Now, in that process, we're looking not just within the Linux Foundation and in in my role, but also outside, and that includes not just the software stacks, but also the hardware infrastructure layer. So that that could be OCP, that could be TIP. Etc., and several others that just that are coming up, as well as harmonization with standards bodies, right? So we believe that standards and open yeah. source coexist, absolutely, and there's a complementary relationship there. So you know we've been, you know, um, actively working with mm -hmm. several of the standards, you know, MEF, mm -hmm. DM Forum, you know, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, trying to get um, a view. We just published a white paper on the Linux Foundation website on harmonizing standards and open source. So there is a whole movement of ecosystem because at the end of the day, a carrier wants to solve a problem. Mm -hmm. They don't care how we solve it. I mean, they do, but not 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 in a fragmented sense, right? And this, that so problem is different from what an enterprise wants to solve, and it's different from what a cloud. Now, to your earlier question, the great news is cloud carriers and enterprises 
they're looking and smelling the same <laughs> as yeah. you know, cloud native apps, cloud na uh, container networking, and open source networking, they all start combining, coming together. <laughs> so I want to share with you a comment we had the other day, and uh, there's, a, there's a, a story of the four wolves that were in, um, put into the Yellowstone Park and, and changed the ecosystem, because mm. Yellowstone had a river problem. Uh -huh. And so they injected four wolves into the ecosystem. Turns out, the deer went away, things started growing, and then the whole ecosystem became so much more sustainable. So, not that we're trying to get at who's the wolves, but balancing <laughs> and coexistence is the point here. You can live with wolves and not get eaten, unless you're their target, but there's a balancing act on ecosystems. Uh, and to have a good sustainable ecosystem, you need to have uh, freshness, certainly standards, and new blood, new ideas. What is uh, your vision on uh, coexistence? Because this is one of those things that we're seeing right now emerging, less about my project's better than your project. You're seeing a lot more collaboration going across communities, Correct. more than ever. 100% agree. I think the fundamental problem has always been only the technical geeks understand the differences between the projects. And then the layer of abstraction in people, right, whether it's management or media, you know, they start looking and feeling that as if they are competing, right? I'll give you an example. In, a, in the data plane acceleration kit, we have projects like you know, FDIO, DPDK, IOWiser, you know, uh, OVS, there's, there's lots of projects there, right? And people are like, oh my God, there's so many. Well, guess what? One of them is a kernel-driven thing. Other one is a set of libraries. Third one builds on the libraries. So, yeah. so that level of understanding it's is missing. It's interplay between all the it's projects. It's interplay, right? So and that's and one, dependencies. And dependencies, right? So that's one of the things that we want to highlight here very significantly this year in terms of just sheer education, right? Because part of the coexistence is understanding each other, right? If we understand each other on what role we uh, each of the projects play, it's easy, whether it's Linux Foundation or outside. So that's the first step. The second step is, if they're complementary, I want to take the next step and test them out for interoperability because now you have put two pieces together. Remember, networking was a fully you know, black box five years <laughs> Literally. ago. Literally. We <laughs> took it, blew it up, fragmented it, disaggregated it, and now we got to pull, and, and we got tremendous innovation out of each of these layers. So you know, we were very successful on the whole disaggregation and SDN disruption. Now it's time to put it into you know, a production-ready solution. So as we put that, those things in, uh, we'll see that harmonization is going to play a big role. Arpit, great to have you on, on, on here sharing the insight. Always great to get the inner workings, plus a great perspective on the industry trends, and uh, congratulations on your success, and we'll continue to follow you and all your work uh, in the networking area, all the projects, Stu, Miniman, and team, uh, and we're going to continue to see you at the Open Networking Summit among all the great shows. Thank you very much. All right, thank thanks you. for coming on. Live coverage here in San Francisco as part of our exclusive two-day coverage of the inaugural Cisco DevNet Creative Event. I'm John Furrier with Peter Burris. We'll be back with more after this short break. Stay with us. Hi, I'm April Mitchell, and I'm the Senior Director 